Hello and welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to look at 10 different upgrades you can make for your 3D printing workspace, your workshop. In my case, this is just a, my second bedroom and uh, primarily used for making videos and 3D printing. Let's get into it. I'm going to be showcasing 10 different items. Uh, I'm going to start with the Dremel. I think Dremel is one of the tools that it's good for not just 3D printing people, but also people doing carpentry. It is a very versatile tool, can create holes, can do sanding. There you go. So now it's currently sitting at 90 degrees. So you're able to work on your object like this without having to put your hands all the way at the bottom. The price for this tool is anywhere from 80 to $150. For the amount of things that it can do, it's a really great price. One thing you really have to have in your 3D printing workshop is a filament dryer. Um, as you know, filament will absorb moisture. There are different filaments that will absorb moisture quicker than others. PLA being the least susceptible, while nylon, T, uh, TPU, PETG being the most susceptible to moisture, okay? And what happens when filament absorbs moisture, it will develop stringing, uh, the filament will become brittle, dry filament, means good prints, all right? So a filament dryer is a no-brainer for somebody who has quite a bit of filament kicking around. Um, that is something you need to have. Here's another product that will benefit you in your 3D printing journey. Um, as some of you know, when you buy uh, filament, it usually comes in a bag and you'll find a desiccant bag inside. So this is what it does. This here allows you to repackage your filament and make it airtight. Let's plug it in and see how it works. <laughs> this is the locking system. Okay. Um, this is to open it and then and there's a loaded... Um... All right, can you, can you try to load this filament up? Okay. <laughs> okay, that got uh, that kind of got scary at first because that plastic was literally bending. Yeah, this one, yeah. Okay, so it still has a little bit of still air. A little bit of air because you got scared, so that's why. I well, because it looked like it was gonna break. It was not gonna break. No. Okay. And this is how when you buy new filament, this is how it usually comes pre-packaged. I'd like to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, PCBWay, and show you what kind of services they have to offer. You can go to PCBWay.com, click CNC slash 3D printing, then click 3D printing service. You will see a list of different material and all their properties. Then what you can do is upload your SDL file and request a quote from PCBWay. After you get your quote, you can place an order for your design to be printed with the material of your choice. Link to PCBWay is in the description. All right, so these are the cereal box containers that will allow you to store your filament. Uh, once you finish drying your filament, you can put them inside here and they will be sealed using this lid that it has a rubber gasket. It will create an airtight seal. So no moisture, no nothing can get inside, keeping your filament dry. This here is PVA. PVA is highly hygroscopic. It loves attracting moisture. So what I'll do is I will insert PVA here and I'll put a desiccant bag inside and seal it off, okay? What I also like about this is that it's a clear container so you can clearly see what you have stored ETG. Red PETG, all right. There you go. And this is how you're going to store your filament, keep it dry and prevent any printing issues down the road. It's uh, definitely something you need for your 3D printing workspace, okay? Alrighty, let's move on to the next product. Right now we're going to look at creating mechanical threads uh, within your 3D prints. 
As some of you know, when you're designing a 3D printed part that includes holes, these holes will typically be smaller than what they're intended to be. The reason why you have smaller holes in your actual 3D print as compared to the model in your CAD program, um, you will develop shrinkage, you will have over extrusion, uh, your filament might be oozing uh, as it's not fully dry. So there's a lot of conditions that can cause the hole to become smaller than what it appears to be in your program, in your uh, CAD program. What you also have to consider when exporting your model is that you'll find that these circles are actually composed of multiple polygons. So it is not an actual circle, but many polygons put together. So even though you designed the model to have, let's say six millimeter hole, this hole will technically be smaller. As you can see, I designed the hole to be six millimeters. So for you to be able to print the hole, uh, the size that you want, you need to be aware of these tolerances. Okay, so now how do I manage to insert this inside here? This is where the soldering iron comes into play. So what are you going to do? You're going to plug in your soldering iron, let it heat up. So you're going to allow your soldering iron to heat up this threaded nut. And once it's hot enough, you can then insert it inside and melt the plastic. For this next item, I'd like to showcase this multi-tool bag. It features a wire cutter, needle nose pliers, a caliper, wire brush, a needle for, your, for cleaning your nozzle, a hobby knife, and the deep burring tool also right here. All of this is roughly 30 to $40. It's a really great value for all the things that you get. Look at all this. You get your hobby knife. I really like this tool as you typically can clean your uh, 3D prints easier. Look at that. Just removing any rough edging. So definitely a nice tool to have. I remember buying this for 10 bucks, so that's 10 bucks. This one here, well, now you can get it from Timo for like $5, but uh, I remember seeing it on the shelving uh, in some stores for anywhere from 30 to $50 just for the caliper itself. Caliper is one of those tools that you really, really need to have um, if you're doing 3D printing. You know, it helps you measure all the things that you want to create. Uh, fix and yeah, it's it's definitely it, it, it's a must tool. You just have to have it. If you're 3D printing and you're designing things, you you need to have a caliper. It's n it's a no-brainer. Okay. And my cutters, my cutters actually uh, they've seen things. Okay, they've been through a lot. So I'm glad I got new new ones from buying this kit. And uh, yeah, you get a glue stick and needles for cleaning your nozzles that's always good to have alrighty so that concludes today's list of items that you can get to upgrade your 3d printing workspace i have the affiliate links down in the description if you're wanting to purchase any of the items shown in the video you'd be supporting the channel also i have one dollar value memberships if you're interested in supporting me as a creator there are different perks that you can get ranging from mentioning your name in the videos you'll also have access to these emoticons to be used in the comments and live chat i thank you for watching this video i'll see you in the next one